The center of mass of an object is the average position of all of the mass. So in this racket-shaped object here, this orange dot marks where the average position of mass is. And you can see it shifted to the left because there's more mass on this side. I know I'm at the center of mass of an object because I, if I place a support point underneath the center of mass, I can balance the object, meaning there's an equal amount of mass on this side and on that side. Now the center of mass of an object is actually quite interesting because the motion of an object is dependent on what external forces act on it. Now in a lot of ways that makes sense. If an external force on this object pushes up, the center of mass moves up. If the center of mass was already moving this way and a force pushed this way, it would slow down and stop. So those kind of things, they're intuitive, they make sense. But there's some very interesting non-intuitive examples of this, and let's get into that. The first thing I want to do is talk about this a little bit theoretically, and then we're going to look at some cool demonstrations. If I had two objects like this, and they were pushed together with a spring, let's say, and I held them up in the air, and then I let go, what would the motion look like? Well, both of those things would go off in arcs, as we can see. The center of mass of the system, however, would simply just fall down, as if I just dropped something. Now, the center of mass doesn't have to be on a physical object. For instance, this roll of tape, the center of mass is actually in the center here, in Nowhereville. So the center of mass, the average position of the mass doesn't have to be on the object. So if I had two objects like this, the center of mass would be somewhere in between them in the air. And what we're gonna see here in a second is that when I throw this across the room, its motion is gonna look crazy and chaotic. But if I look at just the center of dot mass, it's gonna look just the way that a projectile would, a single golf ball flying across the sky would look. Because the only force acting on this object is gravity, externally. And so it, it behaves, the physics behaves exactly the same as this. For instance, if I have a mass like this, gravitational force is down, and that diagram is the same for this, mass, gravity down, as it is for this, mass, gravity down. Ignoring air resistance, of course, which we can do for the most part in this room with this object and this object, air is not affecting it very much, like a wood, a feather, or a piece of paper. And so both the diagrams are the same here, they're both experiencing the same force, and therefore they'll fly the same way if we're looking at just the center of mass. Now let's take a peek and look at that and see what it looks like. So you can see here, I'm launching this object with the lights on and it looks pretty chaotic. It looks like it's kind of going all over the place. But then now I'm gonna launch this object with the black lights on and now all you can see is the center of mass and the motion looks smooth parabolic. We're gonna do that again. We'll do it a little bit slower. So now when it's slowed down, you can really see that this motion is a nice smooth parabola the same way that a golf ball would leave if you hit it. It's pretty cool. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed that. hope you had a little fun. Maybe you learned something. If you enjoy science, please give me a subscribe. I try and post a lot of cool science, interesting things. I'm posting a lot of shorts, but I'm also getting into these longer form videos as well. If you have any interesting demonstrations that you'd like to see or burning science questions that you have, please leave them in the comments below. Um, I'm always looking for new, fun, interesting things to film. Uh, and in the meantime, remember, physics is fun. I'll catch you in the next one.